Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. Today in this module we shall be discussing about data collection and scanning systems that are used in remote sensing. So far in the previous modules you have studied what is remote sensing, what are the principles how remote sensing works as well as analyzing and interpreting the data by means of visual image interpretation and uh, digital image processing. So, the learning objectives of this module is to understand the basic concept of data acquisition by multispectral scanners. This chapter it provides an overview on the two broad types of multiple scanners that is across track scanner and along track scanners based on the method of scanning that is employed to acquire multispectral image data. So, the basic principle and processes of these scanners have been presented in this module. As you all know, the electromagnetic energy that it is used for deriving information about the earth's uh, surface features, they can be detected either photographically or electronically. The techniques of photography make use of chemical reactions on the surface of a light sensitive film to detect the variations in energy. The electronic sensors they produce an electric signal that corresponds to the energy discrepancies in the original scene. Electronic sensors they have enhanced calibration potential, broader spectral range of sensitivity and capacity to electronically store and transmit data. The aircrafts and the satellite platforms are used as scanning systems in remote sensing. The multispectral scanners popularly called as MSS they are used to collect data over wide wavelength ranges. Generally, the satellite scanners are usually electromechanical scanners, linear array devices or imaging spectrometers that operate either in a push broom for example, the spot satellite of France or sweep such as the Landsat mode. The satellite scanners are passive systems which detect solar radiations reflected or emitted from the earth's surface. The data that is obtained from multispectral scanners provides information about types and distribution of vegetation, geomorphology, soil types, road, surface water, river networks and so on. So, the reflectance or short wavelength infrared sensors detect reflected energy from surfaces and have been specifically useful for monitoring fires, for studying areas of volcanic and geothermal activities. The thermal or long wavelength infrared sensors have been commonly used for mapping ocean temperatures and study of the dynamics of coastal waters. The examples of such passive sensors include Landsat, Indian remote sensing satellites, spot satellite and Iconos. Active systems that operate in the visible spectrum utilize linear technologies such as light detection and ranging systems that is lidar systems for oceanographic and forestry applications. The radar systems they use active microwave energy for oceanographic, navigation and forestry studies as well. Now coming to active sensors, these systems operate in the visible spectrum and utilize laser technologies such as light detection and ranging systems for oceanographic and forestry applications. Besides, the radar systems they use active microwave energy for oceanographic navigation and forestry studies. These active systems they are independent of reflected energy from the sun for image formation. Therefore, they have the ability to acquire data during the day or at night time also. Such examples of active sensors are synthetic aperture radar known as SAR or LIDAR that is light detection and ranging systems. So, coming back again to multispectral scanners, they are designed to collect remote sensing data in numerous spectral bands and over wider range of electromagnetic spectrum. These multispectral scanners use different types of electronic detectors. Therefore, these scanners can sense the signal in ultraviolet, visible, near infrared, middle infrared and thermal infrared spectral regions that is in the wavelength ranges of 0.3 to 14 micrometers of the electromagnetic spectrum. Multispectral scanners also have advantage of sensing in very narrow continuous bands. High spatial and low spectral resolution mapping is done by these multispectral scanners. 
Further, the airborne or the space borne multispectral scanner systems generate two dimensional images of the terrain for the area that is beneath the aircraft. The scanning system mainly comprises of two types of scanners, the whisk broom scanner and the push broom scanner. Let us have a look at these two types. Coming to the first one that is the whisk broom scanner. It is also called as a cross track scanner. The best example is the Landsat satellite which generally uses this type of scanner. In this, the single detector is available for each band of multispectral signal using an oscillating or rotating scan mirror in front of a telescope. These systems scan the terrain along scan lines that are perpendicular to the direction of flight line. This can be referred to in the figure 1 that is shown below. So, such scanner permits the repetitive computing of the energy from one side of the aircraft to the other and hence a two dimensional image is built up. Data is collected within an arc below the aircraft by airborne scanners at large angles usually between 90 degree and 120 degree whereas satellite due to their positioning at higher altitude and broader area coverage sweep small ang angles that is about 10 to 20 degrees. With the forward motion of aircraft, successive scan lines are covered giving a series of contiguous narrow strips of observation comprising a two dimensional image of scan lines. So, as you can see in this figure of a cross track scanner, here we have a satellite which has the rotating scan mirrors and the area that is uh, swapped on the ground that falls under angular field of view. At any instant of time, the area that is covered by the satellite is called as instantaneous field of view. So, the ground resolution cell is the pixel that is a picture element that is the smallest unit of the image that is covered in the uh, scan by a scanner. So, the incoming reflected energy from an oscillating or rotating scan mirror is sensed independently and separated into several thermal and non-thermal spectral components that is ultraviolet, visible, near infrared and thermal on the basis of their constituent wavelengths using a dichroic grating and a prism. The scanner visualizes the energy within the instantaneous field of view IFOV of a system which is given in figure 2 subsequently. This IFOV is the cone angle within which the incident energy is focused on the detector. The cone angle is calculated by the optical system and size of the detectors. The total energy transmitting towards the instrument within the IFOV adds to the detector response at any instant. Therefore, more than one land cover type at any given instant of time can be involved in the IFOV and the composite signal response will be recovered. So, a grouping of pure and mixed pixels is involved in an image that depends on the IFOV and the spatial complexity of the ground features. So, as said previously, the figure 2 describes the instantaneous field of view and resulting ground area sensed directly beneath an aircraft by a multispectral scanner. Here the cone angle represented by B is the IFOV that is instantaneous field of view and capital H shows the altitude of the aircraft. So, the figure 2 describes the area of ground surface covered when the IFOV of a scanner is oriented directly beneath the aircraft. This area can be represented as D is equal to H dash into B where D is the diameter of the circular ground area viewed that is the spatial resolution. B is the instantaneous field of view of a system and H dash is the flying height above terrain. The ground segment sensed at any instant is known as ground resolution element or cell. The ground resolution of a single pixel is given by the IFOV depending on sensor characteristics and flight altitude. The diameter of the ground area detected at any time instant is called the spatial resolution of a system. The instantaneous field of view 
for airborne multiple scanner systems lies between 0.5 to 5 milli radians. So, the smaller is the IFOV, the finer will be the spatial resolution. Besides, large IFOV stands for large quantity of total energy that is focused on a detector. This allows higher sensitive scene radiance measurements because of higher signal levels. Consequently, there is improvement in radiometric resolution that is the capacity to differentiate minor energy variations. Numerous aircraft instruments consist of whisk broom scanners. The calibrated airborne multispectral scanner CAMS, airborne ocean color imager AOCI, airborne visible or infrared imaging spectrometer AVIRIS are some of the examples. The figure 3 here demonstrates an along track scanner where you can find the semiconductive elements which all uh, focus at the lens and here the ground cell resolution corresponds to one pixel on the ground. This imaging system is commonly termed as along track scanner due to its direction along the track that is it is similar to the direction of flight. The multispectral data in this scanner is collected using linear arrangement of detectors. These detectors are generally charged coupled devices CCD or semiconductive elements of very small size. Several individual detectors up to maybe 1000, they form a single array that records the energy for only one pixel. Each spectral band is measured by a separate linear array of its own. These arrays are positioned at the focal plane of the image formed by the lens systems such that each scan line is viewed by all arrays concurrently. The energy sensed by each detector of single linear array received from multiple ground resolution cells along the scan line is sampled electronically and recorded digitally. Thus, a two dimensional image is formed by recording successive scan lines with the forward motion of aircraft. These scan lines are slanting perpendicular to the flight direction. In this along track scanner type, the strength of signal is enhanced by linear arrangement of detectors that facilitates longer dwelling time over each pixel. Moreover, improved radiometric resolution is also obtained. The size of the ground resolution cell is estimated by the instantaneous field of view of individual detector. Hence, finer spectral and spatial resolution can be attained with no effect on radiometric resolution. The push broom pattern is widely used scanning approach among conventional hyperspectral sensors for remote sensing. The aircraft applications such as hyperspectral digital imagery collection experiment HYDICE, compact airborne spectrographic imager CASI, hyperspectral imager for low light spectroscopy PHILLS etc. use the push broom scanners. Airborne digital sensor ADS-40 invented by Leica Geosystems is another example of along track multiple scanner. Multiple linear arrays of CCDs for multispectral image acquisition are incorporated in these sensors. Now coming to another type of scanners, those are thermal scanners. So as we know these multispectral scanners operate only in the thermal portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. So, that is the reason they are called as thermal scanners. The thermal infrared radiation refers to electromagnetic waves with wavelength range of 3 to 14 microns. But due to certain atmospheric effects, the thermal scanners are usually limited to 3 to 5 microns and 8 to 14 micron wavelength ranges which are called as atmospheric windows in the thermal electromagnetic spectrum. The next scanner is hyperspectral scanners. Hyperspectral sensing is another recent development in the multispectral scanning in which acquisition of images is carried out in hundreds of very narrow contiguous spectral bands of the visible, near infrared, mid and middle infrared portions of the electromagnetic spectrum. The hyperspectral scanners can also be along track or across track scanners. 
So after this, let us look at the advantages of these scanning systems over conventional photography. Such scanning systems have wider spectral range that extends from visible to thermal infrared wavelengths while the photographic systems they are limited to the visible and near infrared regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. Another advantage is the higher spectral resolution of these scanners con compared to the photographic systems. As we all know the photographic systems record the energy detected by the photochemical processes while scanning systems they detect the energy responses electronically. Further, the photographic systems require a continuous supply of film and processing on the ground after the photographs have been taken, while digital data in scanning system facilitates the transmission of data to receiving stations on the ground and its immediate processing. So, to summarize this module, dear students, we all know that remote sensing using space based and airborne sensor systems has changed the practice of monitoring and understanding of environmental dynamics. In remote sensing, the reflected energy is sensed remotely and transformed into a usable digital form which is then interpreted and analyzed for various applications. The remote sensor uses either reflected solar energy that is passive remote sensing or uses its own outgoing source of energy which is active remote sensing to record the incoming energy after hitting back to the target. We have also studied that the multispectral scanning is widely used scanning system in remote sensing which concurrently acquires images in multiple bands of the electromagnetic spectrum. We have also studied about thermal and hyperspectral scanners and these scanning systems have several advantages over photographic systems that we have discussed. Hope you all will be benefited from this module. Thank you.